Welcome everyone. It's the Mike Tech Show, show number 902. Tonight I'm going to talk about a Facebook hack that happened to someone I know that we have been unable to get his page back. So I have some actual recommendations on what they should do and hopefully Meta will implement this. I'm going to talk about tech magazines because the rest of the things I'm going to talk about tonight were pulled out of Maximum PC and there's a reason and I'm going to discuss why. So I'm going to give a Windows AI update, a program called Local Send. I always talk about the Surface Pro in replacing the battery and I fix it and I learned this from the magazine. They have a link because someone wrote in for the help. And the author, you know, recommended a website that will walk you through opening a Surface Pro, which you've got to have a lot of patience and a lot of time. Then a two-factor authentication program, Authy, is going away. So what should you use if you use that? And how can you convert everything if you have a lot of programs and different of things like I do that's already committed to Authy. So different VPNs and, you know, what whatever. You know, I'm sure all of you, and if you don't, you should have a two-factor authentication app that you use. Let's talk about the Facebook hack. And here's what's interesting. The person is a salesman for a company. And I don't want to, I'm not going to give away any of the info, but this is his personal page. And I always look forward to reading anything he posts. He always, he's a huge baseball fan and plays baseball and uh, is a Phillies fan. And um, I love seeing a lot of his posts. But this last one over a week ago was about Bitcoin and that how he's now certified in selling it. I was like, boy, this doesn't look right. Well, a few days after that, my son says, Dad. And we're gonna we're gonna use the name Joe. Joe's Facebook account got hacked. And I said, you know, he said he changed he tried to change the password. He can't. Because his email has been changed and his cell phone was changed. So he can't authenticate anyhow to get his page back. So you say, okay, wait, there's, there's forms out there. Well, he's in an endless loop. He needs a human to step in, verify that it's him, and then make the change to get his email back, like put the email back and then put the phone back. So how did the person get in in the first place? And we didn't even talk about that. I haven't talked about that with Joe. But I believe his email was hacked. And the first thing I told my son, I said, call him. Tell him no matter what, change your email password. Because they probably got hold of the, of the account. And then they were, once you get hold of the email, boy, you can reset anything. So they probably went, you know, it went to Facebook, reset the the uh, the password, logged in, and then changed the phone number and changed the email account for verification. Well, here's what I recommend first for Facebook and, or Meta, whatever, you know. One of the things you can't do is allow a user to change their email address and their verification phone number, there should be a delay. If you change your email, then you shouldn't be allowed to change the phone number for like a week or so. And I, I'm taking this approach from GoDaddy because of the possibility of someone taking over someone's domain and transferring it. If you change your contact email or contact phone number, you can't transfer the domain, I believe, for like 30 days. So you have a waiting period. 
I think there should be a waiting period of a week or two on Facebook or anything like this in social media that if you change one piece, you're not allowed to change everything. There's a, there's a wait. You, you can't change this right now, you know, because, hey, you changed your email or you changed your phone number. So you now have to wait two weeks before you can change your email. It's the only way to prevent this endless loop where Joe cannot get his Facebook account back. Now, I got an update before the show. My son, he's with, uh, he's in B&I, where my, my son is in B&I, and he updated my son today. In Instagram, which is owned by Meta, he made his account verified. That's the, the blue check or whatever that is to be verified. And he was then able to contact support where he had, I believe, emails back and forth explaining his problem. They did not promise anything, but since they are meta, they were going to look into what they can do. And especially since they knew they were communicating with the right person because he went through the verification to be verified on Instagram. And I was like, I can't wait to see if this yields him getting his page back because that would be a great path. But I thought that was very clever, you know, of him uh, attempting that. But this is the, uh, I keep hearing this all the time. I don't know if you remember last year, I talked about, uh, I tried to help a business that was a restaurant where their Facebook page got taken over and they have a, a different, because they're a business, they have a little different path for tech support. So the tech support came back and said, show us a picture. We can't find any photographs of any human beings from your Facebook feed. If there was a picture of the business owner somewhere where then he could send a driver's license or something, they would release the account to him. So you, in, if you're a business, you have a little better way. And so my advice is, if you're always taking pictures of food or always taking pictures of something else, and you're, or maybe the products you sell and you're a business, make sure there's some pictures of you. So this way, for a verification process, you can prove who you are. And um, it's interesting because of the pictures in his account, why don't they do that? And why doesn't Facebook have a process where you can change, maybe upload? <coughs> Excuse me. You can upload a, a PDF or a JPEG of your driver's license, you know, in a secure for, you know, format that they can use to verify a physical picture in your Facebook feed. Now, see, that would be a great extra verification when this situation happens. But let's face it, we all know Facebook does not care about security. They really don't. And that's a problem. That's been a problem since day one. So just keep that in mind and... Uh, you know, be careful and uh, really protect your email. Make sure you got two factor authentication for your email, even because once that's compromised, man, it's easy to reset passwords for anything at that point. So, all right, that's the Facebook hack. So, now what I want to do is I want to talk about tech magazines. That's right, going old school here. The rest of the show, except for the emails I'll read at the end, are from Maximum PC from February and March. I went through those issues and there was a lot of great little things that I want to talk about that I learned. Now, the problem with publications, I get it. By the time the magazine's released, the information's old. We can get tech news 
and information so much faster. So a couple things I'm putting out there for websites, for tech information and news. What are your favorite sites? Send me your top favorite sites and I'll do a show putting a collection of all the sites and the sites that I like and we will I'll do a, a future show so I'll give this a few weeks for everybody to hear this and send it so um, what I would like to do is uh, just definitely uh, send me an email Mike Mike Tech show at gmail.com it's ready to give my business email and let me know your favorite news sites like where do you go for your tech news so some of you go here you know um so let me bring up uh first now you know what let's talk about the program local send local send is a program that allows you to share files from your PC to your phone for free. So first you go to localsend.org, click download and uh, click windows. And on the following screens, um, the down, you download the version, then you get local send for your smartphone. And I will put the links where you can get the app for Android and for the iPhone. Now you run the program and you get connected with both your phone and your computer. So you just follow the instructions, get it connected. After you get connected, now you can send files from your PC to the phone. You choose the target device after you get these all registered accept the transfer, and then you can even bump files back to your PC. This is cool program, and I would have never learned it had I not read about this in Maximum PC. And I think this is from the February issue. So very cool. Now I'm going to bring up, and I'm actually going to demonstrate the, the next site, um, what I got. Let's see here. I am going to show this on my screen. So uh, there's the local send program to download. I read in the help article in the help section where readers write in problems. And one of them was how to replace a Microsoft Surface battery pack. And I've ran into this where you're kind of held hostage to only send it to Microsoft and they charge a ridiculous fee to replace your battery. So I fix it. And this is always good to remember. And I don't have the patience or the tools to do this, but I know someone that does, and I may send him these instructions and my old surface pro where I have someone with a cracked screen gave me the same surface pro. And I have a dead surface pro from the battery but everything else is good. I just need the battery from the one move to the other. So take a look at these steps. You, you got the back cover, shows you exactly what to do step-by-step, step, the tool that you need. It tells you ex the exact torque screwdriver, then where to use a, a, the, the, the sponger or similar flat-headed tool to open up. All of the places are marked here on the screen to all the screws. Then exactly how to open it up, the battery pack, and voila. Seven steps, but you need the tools, you need the patience, and to be able to pull this off. And I'm not, I'm not good at this anymore. So that's why I think it's important that, uh, you know, sites like I fix it. And and by the way, the link is in the will be in the in the show notes, just like for local send. And everything from this moment on is in the show notes. So I'm reading that the two factor authentication program Authy, which I use, the desktop version is going away. So what are we going to use? 
And I was like, when I read that, I was like, wow, see, that's the kind of new stuff that I don't, I didn't read that online. And I would have never known that had there not been this little article. And here, 2FAS.com is a free replacement. It's an open source two-factor authenticator program. So I, that the link in the show notes, and that link has links to the Apple Store and Google Play. So you have it for your Android or your Apple. So let's say you have lots and lots of authentications. How do you get them transferred? Well, they go into this. And there's, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his, pronounce his name, but Bourdreau uh, from uh, GitHub has, if you scroll down to, let's find it, it's... Uh, um, here you go. Authy to other authenticator. And this is an article by this person on how to transfer all of your Authy settings over to 2FAS. So that's great. So this gets, you know, deep into the weeds for doing this, but it's great that there's a program and there's steps on what to do and how to do that. So I really, really, really appreciate that. So hold on a second. There we go. All right. Um, I am having, let's see if that's okay. I'm having some, uh, some video trouble. There we go. Okay. Let me now minimize. All right. Now, let's get back to my notes. Oh, something I wanted to talk about um, was not just the surface battery replacement, but this is interesting. And this is right out of the magazine. Windows AI Update. This year's second update for Windows is all about Copilot. If you think AI is everywhere already, it's about to get even more pervasive. By summer, we'll have the first swath of AI PC systems with hardware AI acceleration. Windows will have a new update aimed at integrating AI into the heart of the OS. Oh joy, I can't wait. Um, rather than a scattered feature set. So called update 24H2. And now 24H1 is due out this spring. So, and this is of course for Windows 11. And the buzz was that Microsoft would mark the significance of the change by calling it Windows 12. Other sources which have delved into Microsoft's support documentation can find no mention of 12, given that Windows 11 has yet to really establish itself as the leading version. The fact that Windows 10 only has about a year of full support left, it seems that we will have to wait until 2025 for Windows 12. Let me tell you something. If Windows 12 comes out, if, the, if it's going to come out, boy, I hope they get it out because I will go directly from 10 to 12 and skip over 11 because it makes no sense, you know, and going to 11 when you know there's 12. When it does arrive, expect a substantial upgrade that will push an advanced version of Copilot right to the front, not on a sidebar. We'll get AI-powered assistance for text, images, and more. Plus, you'll be able to use natural language search qu queries. Windows will be able to upscale images and video too. We saw the new UI features at a Microsoft presentation recently, including a floating taskbar. That would annoy me. So I'm not, I don't want a floating taskbar. System icons at the top of the screen and a new smart menu. There's always a new smart menu. I like that. Uh, It'll be more modular, and you'll be able to drag widgets to your desktop. Details are fuzzy, 
but some features are already on the Windows Insider Canary channel where changes requiring long lead times are tested. And they wrap up, we've, we're, bar we're barely 15 months on from the public launches of ChatGPT and Dow e Yet by the end of this year, we'll have AI PCs running a version of Windows with embedded AI functions. That's a lot of progress in a short time. But with Microsoft overtaking Apple as the world's most valuable company this month, expect AI to be part of a pretty much everything, everywhere that Redmond Giant does going forward. <laughs> So I don't cough for two days, and then I, I knew it. I would have coughing fits during the show. So sorry about that. All right. So that I wanted to read directly from the magazine because that's an, a very interesting, short AI update for hardware and uh, the operating system. And boy, that's the first time I heard of Windows 12 being mentioned. So we got to wait and see what happens. I have two emails that I want to get to. And one is from Andrew. And this is, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Um, have you seen or heard of the below tech, text message? Okay, he sent me a text message, a, a, a picture of it. I don't use Amex and have not been alerted to a line of credit being opened. And this is from Andy. Andy, thank you for sharing that. And this was about the pig butchering scam. And it starts with a text. And boy, I've gotten texts that I know are not real. And I just delete. And I pick delete and report. So I can get rid of it. Uh, you have to be, you cannot respond to a text message that you feel is not right. Don't respond because that's how you get sucked in. So, uh, Andy, thank you very much for that. And now this email is from Chris. So it's longtime listener of your show. I work in cybersecurity, so I'm always interested in security-related tools. I ran across Bluemira, B-L-U-M-I-R-A.com. They offer a cloud SIEM and XDR solution geared towards small businesses. They have free offering that I use personally for my church to monitor Microsoft 365. I couldn't remember you covering anything like this in the past, so I thought I would send it over. I love that. Thank you. I did have a call with them to get pricing as they don't offer that on their site. Take care, Chris. Chris, thank you very much. And one of the things I will make sure is that I have this link in the show notes and it absolutely will be there. That's it. Cutting the show short tonight, I have to call a client and help them. So I'm not even going to be doing a post show uh, for tonight. And I I got to get up extremely early tomorrow and head to the airport and pick up my wife, who's going to be down uh, for Easter, which is great, which makes me think if you are celebrating Easter, everybody, please have a happy Easter. We I wish you and your family Stay safe, be happy, and I want to thank everybody for downloading and supporting the show. I really appreciate it and all your email responses. Thank you, thank you. Uh, don't forget, you can check out the video for the show at youtube.com slash MichaelSmithMTS. That's it. See everybody next week. Same time, same channel. Bye-bye.